this is where the waves would come all the way through the trees and pretty much stop here. And that's what we saw that day when we first arrived on the Saturday morning. Um, the waves were, came right through the trees, right to this area. We walked through probably two or three feet of water to get to the house. And we opened the door of the house and water poured out of our house as we were walking in. Dawn Burke describes the flood that changed her life, how the wind came up on Grand Lake and the waves pounded against her house. Even today, when you look at how far away the lake is, it's hard to believe that it actually happened. For the last two years, New Brunswick has lived through the worst floods in Canada. The flood of 2018 was historic. It was supposed to be a once-in-a-lifetime event. But then the waters rose again this spring. And so people here wonder, what if this is just how things are going to be from now on? And that's why I've come to New Brunswick, to find out how the rising waters have affected people's lives. The house was right here. This is okay. the house, yes. And, uh, yeah. It's gone. It's gone. Dawn and her husband raised six kids here. That's a lot of memories. Still, when she was told that her house couldn't be salvaged, she refused to let her children know it upset her. I didn't cry for it. I didn't cry once for it. I think that for me, it was important to show my kids that material possessions come and they go. And that's not what's going to define who we are. The province paid Dawn a percentage of what her house was worth, and she considered rebuilding, but in the end decided against it. We're moving away from the flood zone. How high do you build? How bad are the floods going to get? So that was a struggle for us. This is the land belonging to my grandparents, a place that used to have a cottage built by my grandfather 48 years ago. I think what it was to me as a child was just freedom to be creative and to, to have fun. Sarah Kerstead has always taken photos to make sense of her world. I just remember standing in what was their kitchen. The whole front of the cottage was just open to the water. It was, the walls were completely gone. What do you think you lost? I think just a, what I thought to be the symbol of a childhood. And I thought I, I had lost sort of an era of my life. The living room had a window that just opened right up to the lake so you could be sitting on the couch and, and see the lake. And then there was another little bedroom um, to the right. That was Grammy's room. So she, she used to have a window right to the lake, would always listen for the waves in there. In a way, it's gone, but it's, it's still here. That's one thing my grandmother said. She, uh, when, when we were sort of processing the aftermath, she was like, well, you know, the view, the view's still there. At least the view's still there. I don't necessarily need the cottage to physically be there to still understand what, what it meant in this area meant growing up to me, that, that's still there. Sarah's family decided not to rebuild. They say it's too risky. And these are the kinds of decisions being made all over New Brunswick, all over the country. I mean, nobody knows for sure what the water will do year to year. But what if we could better predict where the floods will hit? And then you can see here, there's a, I guess, flooding downtown. This is an interactive flood map developed in Fredericton just this spring. You enter all the environmental variables and it predicts where the water will go. Now the remarkable thing is it was created by 15-year-old Cynthia Tsui and her brother Leo. Because they've lived through the floods too. It's just it's such a devastating event to like lose like your home due to flooding. So we felt that if people could know in advance of time and could really just prepare adequately, um, for flooding, then that could really help the communities. What can I do with this if I live here? 
if you live along the river, our model can now show, uh, say you live here, if there's a blue color there, it means your house is getting flooded, and you can see how severe it's getting flooded by the color gradient. Cynthia and Leo tell me it took months of work to create their flood model, which has proven to be remarkably accurate, and they hope to make it available to everyone in the province. We're just happy to know that um, we can use our model and we can give back to the community somehow um, in the following years. Predicting floods could be one of the most important sciences of the future. More and more people who live beside water will need information to decide what to do with their homes. People like Lisa Sanderson, who lives here on the banks of the St. John River. Water wasn't, wasn't an issue when we, we looked at it. We looked at historic floods and nothing had ever come to the house. So we thought we were safe. And so Lisa bought her dream home. I mean, who wouldn't? But now things seem to have changed. Two years in a row, Lisa's house is flooded. And even though the water is gone now, she can't shake the stress of the last couple of years. I think it's the feeling of walking out on the deck and looking out at where the water should be and seeing a neighbor sitting in a kayak right underneath your deck. Um, just images like that where we're sitting in, like we wouldn't be able to sit here, we'd be up to here in water right now. Lisa tells me the thing about floods is it doesn't get easier the more they happen, it gets harder. This year, the helplessness feeling, I think, was worse. The anxiety was worse because you, you know what to expect. You just didn't expect it to happen two years in a row because you know how hard it is um, to just see the water coming and know what you have to do and hope that it works. And it's, it's a feeling of, feeling of doom and dread. It just feels like it's attacking your life, I guess. Lisa admits that the last couple of years have shaken her and she's going to start going to counseling. It's really hard because you just kind of, you picture your, your life here. It looks like just a little piece of, little piece of land to someone, but to us, it, it just, it perks us up when we come home every single day. Um, like, look at it, it's beautiful. It's hard to think about planting your life somewhere else, but. But at the same time, we can't go through what we went through the last couple of years. In the end, Lisa isn't sure what she'll do. She's explored building a flood wall, and she and her partner have looked into moving too. But how do you sell a house that floods? I haven't actually been down to the beach since, uh, since the flood. It was a little, too, uh, a little too real, I guess, to see the water. When we first came down to this beach, this is one of the selling points is standing here looking at this river. And, and now what is it? It's like that friend who betrayed you, who, you know, you still hang out with, but you're just careful. And that's the thing, we've always been attracted to water, wanted to live near it. Maybe the question is, how do we do that now? Nick Purden, CBC News, on the banks of the St. John River.